Hi there, I'm out in the car again. I will now go into the day's destination. That will be Granbergsdals Hytta. In this video I'm going to visit three old time blast furnaces. The videos are filmed with one week in between, so there is a little difference in the weather and amount of snow in the different parts of the video. The first blast furnace is Pershyttan, outside a little small town called Nora. This is the best preserved furnace of the three. Next one is the blast furnace in Svarto. That one is the most modern of the three and the blast furnace that was used latest of them. It was in use until 1966. This is also the last charcoal blast furnace in Northern Europe. Unfortunately it's in very bad condition. Today it's only the blast oven left. The third one is Granberstahl's blast furnace. It's in better condition and they also have some type of historical environment to describe how old charcoal that was used in the process was made. Sometimes they have a charcoal stack and produce charcoal in the old way. All three is worth to visit if you are interested in that type of historical sites. You can see the door where they transported coal and ore into the blast furnace. But it's a lot of snow. <laughs> you can see. Uh, to my knees and I don't have the best trousers to this I think I had to go back to the car if you see the chimney on the house and also on this house, you see there, there is uh, some type of uh, iron crowns on the chimney. And that's typical for this uh, area and this type of places where, where they have a lot of iron industry back in the day. Uh, you needed a lot of air to the big blast furnace and I guess the White House was um, a house where they once had a big water wheel and uh, I guess that the water wheel produces the force to those big air compressors and different uh, machinery that needed for the uh, factory. But I have to show you I don't know if you can see. <coughs> yes, it's a lot of snow. It's up to my knees here. Um, so I guess I will be wet. Um, I have to show you in the summer when it's less snow. But this, um, if you can see this red, uh, would, uh, Those red rods, I think you call them flat rod in English, can move back and forward and transport movement from the rotating water wheel over a long distance. This water wheel produced the power to the air compressors for the blast furnace 
and it also powered the water pumps and the elevators to the iron main here in Pershyttan. And uh, as you can see, you have no uh, building around it. It's just the oven. Here you can see the building, how it uh, looked once in a day. This is Northern Europe's last uh, Trekholshytta, charcoal uh, blast furnace. I guess that the uh, chimney may be a roast oven to roast the uh, iron ore before use it in the big oven and that um, blast furnace is in that building but I'm not sure of course it's it's a guessing um, well I'm now at um, Grönbörstal Grönbörstal Sitta Grönbörstals blast furnace and I will try to make some movie for you look a little icy here I guess I have to walk carefully You can see that type of stone that you can see here and that stone that uh, uh, lower part of the furnace is built off is very typical for this uh, area. It's uh, slag in Swedish I don't know in English, but uh, when you are melting the iron ore, you get iron and then you get that type of product that they use to make stone of. And uh, here you have water to power all the uh, 
all the machinery that were used to the furnace blast um, air compressors and uh, they also have some type of hammers to crush the iron ore to make it <coughs> easier to melt if the blast furnace process was normal the hot slag floated on the liquid iron inside of the oven like a cream or on milk but sometimes the temperature was too low and the slag became viscous and difficult to separate from the iron when emptying the oven then it happened that small drops of iron got stuck in the slag these little pieces of iron was necessary to get back for financial reason so you placed the slag stone in an iron basin under the stamp mill and crushed them and picked the iron out from the slag so that was the reason of this machine to crush the slag stone, the sinter stone, if there was of iron in them. It's pretty amazing, don't you think? I think uh, this um, building is amazing. As you can see, there is a lot of uh, stones of that type of material. Uh, some of the stones almost look like uh, glass. As you can see here. I guess uh, <coughs> that's an old type of refrigerator <laughs> to store food in. But you can see in the soil that's a lot of uh, charcoal. It's a little model. It's a miniature of in the scale 1 to 10 of uh, Granberstahl's blast furnace as it looked uh, when it uh, was built in uh, the middle of uh, 1600. The 17th century uh, of um, by Morten Eri Eskilsson that moved here from Nora 
uh, the blast um, oven uh, was built uh, of uh, flat stones uh, on a on a horizontal horizontal dry um, area uh, uh, or digged in a little hill. Uh, during the process uh, of uh, producing uh, iron, uh, it would produce uh, toxic uh, gas, uh, uh, carbon monoxide, and that's the reason why the oven was placed uh, outside. If it wasn't enough uh, of uh, uh, air ventilation. It is so amazing. I really, really love this. <laughs> well, that was all from the video about blast furnaces. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you stay for the next one. If you have any question, please leave them below and I will try to answer them. Thank you for watching and see you again next time. Bye bye.